This is Sheila Aliens. Today is September 4th, 2014. There's an article in Popular Science entitled, Mysterious Phony Cell Phone Towers Could Be Intercepting Your Calls. So basically there's a company called ESD America, and they have built what's called the CryptoPhone 500. This is a $3,500 ultra-secure Android phone, built on top of an unassuming Samsung Galaxy S3 body, and it features high-powered encryption. Les Goldman, the CEO of ESD America, and his customers have collectively driven around the United States, and with this phone, they were able to locate 17 different phony cell phone towers, known as interceptors, within the U.S. Oddly enough, most of these are located on military bases. So an interceptor is a phony cell phone tower that your cell phone will connect to, and on their end, they get to control your phone 100%, control and or eavesdrop however they see fit. Interceptor use in the U.S. is much higher than people had anticipated. One of our customers took a road trip from Florida to North Carolina and he found eight different interceptors on that trip, Goldsmith says. We even found one at South Point Casino in Las Vegas. Who is running these interceptors and what are they doing with the calls? Goldsmith says we can't be sure, but he has his suspicions. What we found suspicious is that a lot of these interceptors are right on top of U.S. military bases. So we begin to wonder. Are some of them U.S. government interceptors, or are some of them Chinese interceptors? Is it just the U.S. military, or are they foreign governments doing it? I'm willing to bet it's our own government. So I compared a map of where they found these towers to a map of military bases, and sure enough, it does correlate. I'm from Arizona, so I can see that this is probably Fort Huachuca, Arizona, and davis Monthan Air Force Base, which is Sierra Vista and Tucson or it might be Tucson and Phoenix. So that would be davis Monthan Air Force Base and Luke Air Force Base. And here you can see all of them. They have one in New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Illinois, Florida, three in Texas, one right on the New Mexico, Mexico, Texas border, two in Arizona, several in Nevada. You got some near Los Angeles as well as San Francisco. Then up there in Seattle, Washington. Very, very suspicious. One of these interceptors costs less than $100,000, says Goldsmith. Full-featured devices like the VME Dominator, available only to government agencies, can not only capture calls and texts, but even actively control the phone, sending out spoof texts, for example. That's where they text under your number, text whoever they want, without you even knowing that it has happened. I don't think they'd do that, because they'd be exposed, but who knows? Maybe they mess with people that way. Edward Snowden revealed that the NSA is capable of an over-the-air attack that tells the phone to fake a shutdown while leaving the microphone running, turning the seemingly deactivated phone into a bug. And various ethical hackers have demonstrated do-it-yourself interceptor projects using a software programmable radio and the open-source base station software package OpenBTS. This creates a basic interceptor for less than $3,000. On August 11th, the FCC announced an investigation into the use of interceptors against Americans by foreign intelligence and criminal gangs. So why don't they investigate our government for using these on us? Whenever Les Goldsmith wants to test out his company's ultra-secure smartphone against an interceptor, he drives past a certain government facility in the Nevada desert, which will remain unnamed. He knows that someone in the facility is running an interceptor, which gives him a good way to test out the exotic baseband firewall on his phone. So when Goldsmith and his team drove past the government facility in July, he also took a standard Samsung S4 and an iPhone to serve as a control group for his own device. That way he can see what regular smartphones do when they drive past these interceptor facilities. As we drove by, the iPhone showed no difference whatsoever. The Samsung Galaxy S4 the call went from 4G to 3G and back to 4G. The crypto phone lit up like a Christmas tree. Though the standard Apple and Android phones showed nothing wrong, the baseband firewall on the crypto phone set off alerts showing that the phone's encryption had been turned off and that the cell tower had no name, a telltale sign of a rogue base station. Standard towers, run by, say, Verizon or T-Mobile, will have a name, 
whereas the interceptors often do not. And the interceptor also forced the crypto phone from 4G down to 2G, a much older protocol that is easier to decrypt in real time. If you ever notice your phone drop down from 4G to 3G or even 2G, you might be getting intercepted. But then again, it doesn't necessarily have to show. If, if it's a decent interceptor, it won't even reveal the fact that it's done that. So there you have it, our government lying to us as usual. At least in other countries, they are upfront about the fact that they're a bunch of scumbags running the show. They don't necessarily try to create an illusion of the American dream like we do. That's what makes us all so ridiculous. It's all an illusion, and then behind our backs they do stuff like this. These phony cell phone towers aren't necessarily cell phone towers like you might think. They're probably portable devices, much like the local police stations have nowadays, Stingray, things like that, where they can do the exact same thing when they feel they need to in order to enforce the law. Not to mention the cell phone towers that they have disguised as palm trees, cactuses, boulders. Basically, they can disguise it as anything. They can put it in anything. They probably don't even have to use a fake cactus or a fake tree anymore. But why is the military doing it? That's just above and beyond any explanation. And I wonder if anything will be done about it, or if this will just fade away into obscurity. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Thanks for watching.